flood tide has come down, I managed to get over onto this now what is an islet, it used to be the shore. So I should be able to keep this place to myself for a while today. I have three eagles over here. We have confirmation the circle stood the first flood. Fuck the inverts who told me it wouldn't. We have one lovely river-inspired embellishment here where the tooth gravestone rock over here just got slid over. I can see how a lot of the stones lost much of the sediment. But you see here sediment? They're buried, buried, unburied. So there's a sort of amount of unburial that's happened. And I'm sure there'll be some reburial as it goes along. But you see, if I take this stone here, that's a huge fucking stone. This is a huge fucking stone. So it was all a test. I survived the first test. I wasn't supposed to survive that according to the fucking inverts. I had three eagles up here. They're all gone now when I got here. And uh, said praise Odin and my 41% powered phone just all of a sudden shut down. So uh, we'll see how this one does. The sun's coming out after my praise Odin speech. Fuck all the inverts. Right, nothing wrong with fucking telling the inverts to fuck off. Perfectly, perfectly sound philosophy. I think we're perfectly safe saying fuck all the inverts. And uh, Odin's been showing some things to me about the kinds of interruption that can happen and what can be learned from trying to find yourself as uninterruptible as possible. And uh, just when they, uh, these energies tend to send their interruptions. It's fascinating because there was actually a 20 to 30 second window yesterday when an interruption walked my way, a homosexual man with his dog, uh, at a very critical moment in my day. So I'm, I'm going to learn from that, especially considering what I was up to at the time. Uh, found another nice staff today. We should keep the fucking two-legged inverts away from us for a while. I'm going to enjoy a little movie making and merriment. A, a job well done. I was a little bit... Uh, pissed off at having this curse while I was making it. The other most major circle I ever made had a couple inverts show up while I was making it, just insinuating all kinds of negative things about me and all kinds of... You know, this is what white people generally do, but I call them inverts, you know, across all races. Like, a lot of Chinese inverts, Filipino inverts, Oriental inverts, a lot of micro dicks, right? A lot of genetically or uh, sexually ambiguous people. Love it that the, uh, the stones of Odin remain. Even the center one, this huge keystone that I laid. Hello, Odin. Um, had a lot of the sand that it was buried in, so you can see it just carved out a huge amount of sand. The interesting thing we can speak about now that the circle has survived at least one flooding, and there's no reason to suspect it won't survive a second or a third. Just yet. Doesn't mean that reasons don't exist, but... I don't suspect them as strongly as I might have, because even though a lot of the sand is eroded, it, the sand gets there one way or the other. So sand is being erod eroded and delivered based on all kinds of factors, and this, this monument will, will give some sig uh, uh, signification of that. Beautiful, isn't it? Making me a little bit horny, actually. Standing here, it's a beautiful combination of fire and water, which is kind of what inspired my meditations on the, the sun inside of Ea. The sun of Ea. The sun inside the earth, the sun inside the waters. The fire engendered by the waters of Ea, or the waters of the deep, of the earth and heaven, all of whom have the, the syllable Ea in there. And uh, A itself represents an Suz, which is all about the significance that the endless significance that should be able we should be able to draw from nature right that's a rune all its own the letter a oh it's going to relax a bit i've been storming around here for an hour or so the day is not nearly as cold as it threatened to be there's an eagle way down here the bald eagle on there my eyes are pretty good yeah, when it comes to bald eagles. Um, yeah, got some light coming on here, some wonderful textures. I love the orange and brown in nature. In nature, you see how connected orange and brown actually are. The crown of brown, the browning crown, the orange crown. So we, orange is the crown, and we can see that in the word brown. Right? Pushing brown. Pushing the crown out of your ass. Ah. 
What once was lost shall soon be gained. I'm very happy about this, I must say. Even the uh, small altar I set up is still there, so these fucking inverts. Like, oh no! It's all gonna go! It's all gonna go! She didn't even look at the circle. They haven't even returned to see it. I've run into them a number of times. They make no mention of it. Right? How often do you see this when you're walking around? Right? Fucking inverts. Right? They don't logic when they don't need to. They don't take an interest when they don't need to. They're very efficient soldiers of Satan. Very efficient. And all they do is interrupt you and take your time. Fuck you. I came out here yesterday and just said, Fuck you, inverts. Fuck you, inverts. I had an amazing day. And one interruption when I came across what I would call a threshold of a little more public area, a little more frequented area, as I came out of my sort of dream spell, if you will, yesterday, which was culminated with almost willing, uh, a wonderful staff floating down the flood tide, uh, only to be interrupted by uh, some young faggot, some young invert. And uh, it's a real problem, you know. Homosexuals, I mean, the military the occult and sodomy, basically. Not homosexuality, it's just sodomy. Because, I mean, you're not sexual when you're homosexual. You've lost your sexual ability. And that's a, it's an interesting subject in itself that people can survive and perform sorts of dubious functions uh, like that. There's something interesting I'm just going to throw in that I've learned about the inverted world is they love awards. They love talking about the awards they get. They love giving awards. They spend a lot of time giving and getting awards. Just something to pay attention to. They'll give anybody an award these days. I love their award giving. Uh, but I've had circumstances where people award me, in a sense, a little more courtesy than they normally would, and then they sort of figure out what I am. <laughs> they change their tune. They don't like giving non-inverted people too much help. So non-inverts, in a sense, have a more difficult life than most people. But I, I actually don't even believe that as I'm saying it, because I don't think inverts treat each other that well. I really don't. I mean, they don't, they don't get anything out of their own inversion. Look at how most homosexuals and dykes treat each other. It's like fucking Lord of the Flies. But they have a really strong in-group, out-group philosophy when it comes to people who understand how ill they are. How abnormal they are. It's, it's, it's perfectly fine to be abnormal. You know why? Because that's what I was fucking called by inverts like homosexuals all of my life. Right? Because non-inverts are abnormal to inverts. Homosexuals think I'm abnormal. Right? Homosexuals consider me abnormal. Narcissists consider me abnormal. Inverts consider me abnormal but useful, right? Because the system uses RH negative people quite commonly. We can serve a great purpose. We have a lot to offer the empire, right? Powerful minds, I mean, diligent little workers. We love to move into managerial and administerial areas because we feel we're pretty converters, of good converters of information and power in a way that does us no little credit when it comes to receiving the ample rewards for our capacities. And the world serves that type of engine for RH positive, RH negative people. It's, 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 a, it's a stupendous subject, and I get glints of, of light about it from time to time, but how the religious nature of the cybernetic mind functions or not under all kinds of circumstances is something that should be studied for the next thousand years. Absolutely fascinating. I, continue, I will continue to study it the rest of my life. It's out of this world how people function. And how, in a sense, you, you could make pretty good arguments they have to function. And maybe even should be rewarded for its all kinds of monetary units for the functions which they perform. And the faith that they put into literally putting the phys in physical space and time their brain function and nervous system in the hands of and with access to all kinds of highly regulated systems that always, have always bordered on the threshold of the occult all of their lives without even knowing what they're a part of. Never, never even doubting it, right? Perfect prison for your mind. But not, not necessarily made of, of even propaganda, but 
But nature and goodness and love, that's what the prison's made of. It's made of nature and goodness and love and working hard and being with your children. In all the time that you can secure, in all the ways that you can secure, the best kinds of relationship is your family. Of course that's what people are doing. And the trouble that people have in, in banishing the demonic influence of this world is that they don't recognize the truth of the fact that everything that imprisons people, right, is done in the name of love and family and what, what contact people want from their, with their children, their family, their friends, to have a good time. Everyone wants to have a good time. That's all. It's all, all society. Of course, everyone working today is working for a good cause and for love and security because they have to. And by and large, you know, by the time people get burnt out at one way of life or another, they have a tremendous capacity by nature to move into another capacity. And the nature of their life in a sense, says, hey, okay, we can work, we can do repetitive activities for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah, we can do that. We can get a sex change and we can do this. And you can do lots of things to your body and your mind and nature will totally go along with it. Maybe even get cancer or, or some kind of awful curse from the medical system. And it'll work with the body. The body will answer that curse because you basically have been swimming in that curse your whole life. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of just flipping a switch in your mind to go from living amiably with the cancer they even tell you is essentially already in you, or all of a sudden not having such a wonderful relationship with the carcinogenic uh, intelligence that's always flowing through your veins in order to be free and work for a living. It's all carcinogenic. It's all a curse. It's pure fecal matter, pure poison, right? In the name of love and security. So there's something to be said to argue for the goodness and the rightness of all the reasons and all the ways that people live out, like a hieroglyph, the reasons. I wrote many times in early my early days in college about hieroglyphic consciousness and this connection between the image for which we live, the image we form, uh, and to whose estimation, under various conditions affecting their ability to estimate the image we're living in, so the reasons or not for how we live and whether or not they actually match up in, a, in an advantageous and ethical way with the images that are more commonly propounded, the multitudinous religions and the fairly common motifs which they share, as those means to motifs are said or willed to live in our minds, in our minds, in the way that we live out our lives. It's an incredible thing, isn't it? You, know, you don't need computers to do that. You don't need an artificial intelligence system. But it, it might be helpful to distinguish between what is artificial and what is not which you'll notice is, is actually one of the most critical types of things to think about. What is artifice and what is natural? Just like if I was out here making meaning about my circles, what is just my own subjective meaning making and what is actually true? It's a fantastic distinction. It's a fantastic distinction. It is horizon of all power is how much something means something because you want it to, or because it just incidentally happens to mean that, and how much that meaning is actually true with something that could be conceived to be natural, to answer to a dramatically natural and epic intelligence, whose consistency, indeed, can be harnessed. And I guess you might say that's moving down the so-called scientific route, but I have, I have great problems with what is called scientific. But I suppose what I'm talking about is science. And something can have utility, interesting enough, in this entire heuristic or neuro heuristic dynamic. Something can have utility. In other words, images or beliefs that appear to get shit done. Okay, we want to get shit done and relax and have a good time. So it's getting shit done. So people look out and they have images that give shit done. Whether or not the meaning making that those images have aroused and continue to feed upon and be fed by are consistent with what the constituent human elements have deemed particularly natural is up for grabs because they don't live anymore under the influence of those images and those images over the influence of the appetites that they've sustained constrained though they are after these images and the barbaric limbs of these images have been applied and the types of access that have been gained to our minds, our families and our lands and it's all about access, right? the right of access We always we talk about disease control, right? It's about not giving a disease access. We set up quarantine.
And the only quarantine I know for a demonic world is to fight. Fight, fight, every day. I know I have anger in my blood for a reason, and to fight, and to fight, and to fight. And to, to appreciate the scintillating and vivid results of my fight. Maybe I'll see an interruption today, maybe I won't. But the circle lived. I've waited a week or two now since I built this to count coup. And now we count coup by the mighty rivers here. Of Eagle River. Odin's River. And the stones were no washed away. Actually, I think a couple stones have moved over here now that I'm looking at it. That's cool. So this stone, well, this stone I pointed out moved, but I think I gotta careful I don't get my feet wet. But if you look over here, I think these two have slid, definitely slid. So there's been a sliding over there, but not a decimation, thankfully. Oh yeah, and I think I see one, one slid out over there too. Holy shit. Now, that, that takes a little work. Now, if this tide was down a little more, if I take my, maybe if I take my shoes off, I can go in there. I could replace that stone with a much larger stone. But, uh, I'm not sure right now. It can be done. Look at that wonderful cunt that it's got in there. I love that cunt. What a beautiful cunt. Yeah, it, the cunt has been vastly improved, and the circular stone in the clitoris actually remained. Strangely enough, I don't know fucking how. <laughs> he just left it there. I assumed it'd be taken away by the curtain. The curtain. So you see the stones that were moved. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and the clitoris remains. I love that. Oh, what an interesting day. Maybe I should go lick it. I don't know. I could do a little mop up. Uh, I've taken my shoes once, off once today, but I actually would just le rather leave it for a little while. I think the tide is going to come down, and whatever I do, if the tide comes down far enough, I might be able to dig it in if the tide is down. But I certainly could find a, a large, couple large replacement stones now that I've seen what's moved under the force of the current, which was part of the, the whole process. If I look over here, see these, these aren't as big as those stones, but they remain buried. So it's interesting which way the current went. Uh, I'm. I just. Don't, I want to continue sort of monitoring it. I'm, it's quite pleasing to see how many stones remain quite coherent with the circle. Again, it took me a while, but I noticed. Maybe the viewer noticed them earlier. Boom, 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 and this one just leaned over basically. Uh, it's quite a heavy stone. I think that's going to remain there. The question may be: If these stones have only moved this far, is that as far as they're going to move? I don't know. So I might leave it the way it is. Um, I see a stick that's coming there, a little log. Um, yeah, you can see some very large stones. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. The bald eagle's still down there, and the sun is. So Lilo is having its way for the time being. I've got a little stone set over here on the other side. You can kind of see beautiful stone. I wish I could get closer. But I'm enjoying this, by the way. <laughs> I'm glad this thing's still here. I really am. Whew. I haven't seen any people today either. Nice. How much better could it get? This is the, the wood structure. This actually fell uh, at the flood tide before a staff that I had hastily planted before I left, before the tide came up. So I've been following it quite clearly. It's good that they're still around. Somebody can uh, maybe do something with it later on. That's kind of neat. I didn't go too far. And uh, gives you some idea of what the, the tide can and cannot carry away. Huh. I wonder what, uh, maybe because they're tied together like that. I can't tell if the river's coming up right now or not.
Yeah, so I think I'm going to uh, peace to you all, by the way. Peace. Um, peace. Peace. Peace in these divine waters. Peace. Maybe be free of all interruption in our passage through the divine waters. <clears throat> May all lying be smote to the nothing from whence it says everything is supposed to come. And uh, from out with nothing seems to really ever want to come at all anymore into the right genetically accurate people. And in the Oris is prescribed for that purpose um, in uh, anatomically and psychologically and uh, ecologically. We send our children to orifices which treat them like an orifice and pretty soon everything becomes orificial. And you need a fucking proctologist dental hygienist combination in order to understand your whole life. La 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 la. So, yeah, I think that um, I'm going to let the stones that have drifted just stay where they are for now. Um, I think the river will be coming down more or less over the next couple days if it doesn't rain anymore. Um, time scales are a little bit fuzzy for me. I mean, I'm a guy who thought that the, the flood swell would be all the way down by today, or even within a few hours of, of the time of that recording yesterday, and I was obviously grossly mistaken. Um, I feel duck energy around me. Just hold on a second. Yeah, duck energy. There's certain ducks around here that I really like. I just felt their spirit. It's nice. I can almost see one of them floating down the uh, the sun-dappled river over there. Oh, I just see I saw a bird take off to my left. Hmm. Perhaps you could see a long-lost love floating down the river toward you. Floating by us and then over a deadly waterfall. <laughs> and their wings open as our hearts wrench and they fly up and around some sort of celestial mist and alight down beside you to regale you with the tales of their life after life and the wings thereof. And so you would sit and, and listen and speak and around you would be woven a golden city and in that golden city we would, we would give birth to our children and our children's children and Stories could be built. Stories could be remembered and spoken. And in a way, where all great knowledge was spoken and received and the variegated joy with which true knowledge has always been received and heartily digested, heartily appreciated, heartily enjoyed, to take pleasure in it, appreciation, Such stories could be conceived of that would give our people so much more peace if peace were the goal of the whole world. Peace were the goal of the whole mind. If peace were the goal of the whole body of man. Does the world have enough peace? Is it peaceful to put on a uniform in the criminal justice system? Is it peaceful? As they sit down at their desks, as they drink their morning coffee, as they head off to their government job, is it peaceful? 
a fit question. As people get into their cars in the morning, as people put on their clothes and go off to their various professions, is are any of them peaceful? And the money that's generated in exchange and the mental and emotional energy that is daily produced, though nobody wishes to speak of it, is that peaceful? What are we the producers of? If we're not the producers of peace, then why aren't we just honest about that? Why don't we just say we're not peace producers? Maybe it just doesn't come naturally to us. It's not our nature. And isn't that what the world basically is telling us? That we don't know how to make peace. There's no way to make peace. There's no power to making peace, except destructive power. It seems that the making of peace itself is like a curse. We always seem to be wanting to make peace, but we never do. And it's as though we don't even expect to. Once the body starts failing, once you get comfortable enough, you sit down into the easy chair that is your life, what contemplations can be had on the one and on the main by at first distancing oneself from the entire world. One, what peace is to be had by contemplating the injuries which thou hast sustained. Or they as nothing before the countenance of the golden city of our youth. Be it many a moon since those days. And what spirit do we have to invoke to take up the task of spinning the golden city with the greatest stories which we could share? Were we at liberty to share all that we would or must among one another? As a hearty component, and as much as that component is occupied now a good deal by an inverted pathology, of its selective logic at best as it is distributed and in turn gleans what it needs to glean as a limb of a digestive system through the various human organs which it claims to dote upon and be the friend of and be the best chance for survival on whose behalf. The argument is made, indeed it's the only one that ever is, and life goes on. We shuffle along and that's the nature of inversion achieves a monopoly interest in how we convert energy and information into what is deemed useful for our own survival imperatives. Right? Clearly, right? if people were looking at what's all around them, they wouldn't live the way they do. You know, if they, if they knew how harm happened and to what scale, if they began themselves to undergo the almost metaphysical process of learning to listen to what the body of man is actually saying. There's the duck I was thinking about. Um, what an entire epic enterprise would one would, one would begin. Death-defying, you might say. But that doesn't happen. And people call me dependent on welfare. Dependent. Right? Oh, there's no, there's no feeling of, of being supported. When I look at what is purported by the world, there's no feeling supported. I, it's, it's, it's a scary feeling not to feel supported by the world, to have so many lies around you. Nobody ever makes a channel on YouTube about the emotional effects of living in a specious, cybernetic, industrial pathology. Right? Nobody, nobody's making therapeutic systems for that, and yet all therapeutic systems fe feed on that. All religions are feeding on it. Right? They're feeding on expanding the vacuum of non-monetary interests in all how, what we actually have to say as persons, as or as flesh and blood man and woman. Because so crafty is the world that many people will think they're speaking about people when they are not. They're speaking about, in fact, kind of anatomically ambiguous, sexually ambiguous um, spirits of Jesus. Or humbled chimericon, walking around, though from the dead, and inhabiting the robes which they have been given, 
with which to enjoy the, the new life, the next world, called growing up. They themselves, under the tutelage of that which is though brought the dead to life, the incompetent to do something at least a little bit useful in the world, which is all anybody is according to the, the most stark and unequivocal facts, statements and claims of that world. In every court, everywhere you look, written like fucking fecal-stained graffiti over all of the images that we are almost often forced to resort to adopting as the integral components of the sharing of the image of life, of what we do and why we do it, and what that means to the images we hold in our minds, that those images fit in our minds as much as our minds first fit into the world. And so this trophic system feeds as we are psychic, in a sense, psychic dependence on whatever society we happen to live in, but we need not be satisfied and contented dependence in that sense. And we can start to find our own kind of nourishment which allows us to trip upon the horizon of what meaning, what is true about the meaning we make compared to the meaning that is made for us. And what that has to do with the knowledge worthy of our flesh and blood, worthy of our actual lives, our actual health. And who cares about that? Do the people around you care? Do your brothers and sisters care? Do your mothers and fathers care? Do they feel put off by the sound of the passion in my voice? Does it sound alien or inscrutable? Malicious, dangerous, pugnacious, offensive, incoherent babble that they cannot hear. They may hear the sound of a quarter hitting the ground at the height of the Christmas shopping system, uh, uh, season, Black Friday in New York City or Times Square, but they cannot hear any fidelity to the sound of the voice of the Son of Man. That they should be deaf and dead to it as 